I like that there's nothing here to get in the way. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. And if you think everything I'm doing is stupid, comment on it and tell me why. All right, you just bought your first side-by-side. -side. You gotta have some way to get it to the trail. You're looking at trailers. Well, utility trailers are generally what's used for transporting a side-by-side. -side. The problem is a lot of them aren't really rated for this type of machine. Your general trailer that is used for hauling a side-by-side -side is usually a single 3,500 pound axle trailer. It usually has the fences down the side and up at the front. And it usually also has some sort of folding ramp. The real kicker for why you shouldn't be using a trailer like that for a side-by-side -side like this comes down to weight. Those single axle trailers with a weight rating of the axle being 3,500 pounds sounds like more than enough to carry your side by side. The problem you've got is this. That 3,500 pounds has to take into account the weight of the trailer and also the side by side. And on top of that, most of them, even though they are rated at 3,500 pounds on the axle, aren't actually rated for a gross vehicle weight of that. They're usually slightly less. Back in the Dizze, your older machines, your old rhinos, especially two seaters, your old Terexes, stuff like that, they don't weigh that much. Two seaters nowadays still don't weigh that much. They weigh about 1,600 pounds. A single axle trailer is generally rated from about 1,600 to anywhere in the 1,900 pound range. And that means that those side-by-sides did great on those single axle trailers. As time has progressed, as technology has progressed, the sport performance models of these side-by-sides have gotten drastically better but also drastically heavier. Whereas an old Rhino or something like that would weigh 1,500 pounds, you could slap it on a single axle utility trailer that was rated for 1,800 pounds. You're probably well within the clear there. This is a 2022 Razor Turbo R4 Sport. It weighs dry weight, so before it's got fluids, before it's got any of that, 2,169 pounds. And that's from Polaris's website. That is immediately over the weight rating of most single axle trailers. I got it looked up right here. I can tell you the dry weight of your Maverick Max is 1942. So that might be something you could get away with. The new KRX4 is even heavier. That's 2,207 pounds. All of these are getting really close to the limit or over the limit of what a single axle trailer can carry. So that's why when you're looking for a trailer, I would say just go with a dual axle. The other thing that happens when you go to something like a dual axle trailer is you end up with something like this. You get a seven wire plug. That means that your trailer has its own brakes that are wired through your vehicle's trailer brake controller. There are some single axle trailers with brakes. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is you are definitely more likely to get a seven wire plug with a dual axle trailer than you are with a single axle trailer. For me, because I do actually pull doubles is what it's called in Utah or triples in some other states or whatever. But long story short, I put my gooseneck in the back of my truck and then I pull this setup or my boat behind that. When you have two joints in what you're pulling, a single axle trailer can really start to kick when you go over bumps and things. It doesn't completely eliminate it, but having a double axle trailer will help you with that side to side whip action it does track slightly straighter. It does help it stay in the grooves of the road better. Even if I had a smaller side-by-side, -side, I would probably prefer a dual axle trailer also for the built-in redundancy. There is two sets of wheels on this on each side. I have had experiences towing and what it ended up happening was I lost an entire hub. I was able to take a ratchet strap, ratchet strap that hub up out of the way. And I was able to get home to the marina on three wheels. If that was not the case, if it was a single axle trailer, I don't have that built-in redundancy. I'm SOL dead in the water. I've got to get that on a flat deck, something to get it home. Okay, so why a car hauler over a double axle utility trailer? There's two reasons, one being personal preference and the other being cost. We'll start with personal preference. No matter how you decide to tie down your side-by-side, whether you use lasso straps like me, I know that that's a somewhat spicy conversation in and of itself. I'm just gonna say the people at shock therapy say that this is a valid way to do it. That's how I'm doing it. The other way is if you tie down to your frame somewhere in here, either way, you have to come over here to a tie down point or a D ring or something on the outside of the trailer. I like that there's nothing here to get in the way. I like being able to just walk up to the side of the trailer and work with my tie down points. Okay, the other point, cost. This is a workhorse trailer. It was manufactured in Ogden, Utah. 
I was out the door at $2,700. $2,700 and some change, but $2,700. An equivalent utility trailer with the fold down ramp and the guards on the side would have cost me about three to $400 more. And to me, that just doesn't make sense. And of course I'm talking comparison direct direct. Seven by 14 deck for all of them. Yes, this is a value model uh, trailer, but it does everything that I need it to do. And it's, like I say, it's cheaper. Going with a car hauler trailer, there are some things that are a pain. The biggest point, pain point is not having the auto load gate that just folds down and you can drive up. You have to use these ramps, you have to pull them out and you have to set them up individually for each tire or each set of tires. The other thing that's a pain, you have this little sticker right here. These bigger trailers, you have to have a two and five sixteenths ball on most of them. I have seen some with a two inch ball, but the majority of them will require a two and five sixteenths ball. If you're towing with a truck that's going to be using a seven pin trailer wiring plug anyways, you should be just fine getting a two and five sixteenths ball. I just feel like overall, the car hauler is more versatile than a utility trailer, as weird as that sounds. Outside of trying to haul like maybe grass clippings or something where those extra bed sides would make a difference, I feel like you gotta do everything that you gotta do on a car hauler, also on a utility trailer. That's why I like them. That's why I went with a car hauler when I was looking for a trailer, especially if you're looking for something to hold one of these bigger side-by-sides. People run single axle trailers with these big side-by-sides all the time. Whoever's driving it, whoever's assuming the risk, they are the ones that have to decide what they want in their trailer. For me, I'm not putting something like this on a single axle trailer. I'm sorry, I've just, I've replaced too many wheel bearings. I'm not gonna do it. So you go to a car hauler, you get increased capacity, you get dual axles for sure, you get trailer brakes almost guaranteed, and you have to tie everything down to the deck of your utility trailer anyways. Those are the reasons why I chose a car, car hauler. You tell me, am I wrong? What am I missing? Why is a utility trailer better? And we'll catch you next time.